This video introduces the new features for Lumericals 2016B release, which is available as of May 2016 and can be downloaded from our website. The 2016B release introduces an automation API that enables automation or workflows involving Lumericals products as well as with third-party products. This allows users to define very complex multi-physics style workflows, and we will illustrate this with the Traveling Wave Modulator example. The API also allows users to perform enhanced analysis and optimization with MATLAB. The new release also includes integration with Cadence Virtuoso, which is a significant improvement of the electronic and photonic design automation framework. Finally, there are also a number of other key features that we'll cover in this video. The figure here shows our current product portfolio. For optical simulations, we have FDTT solutions and mode solutions. For electrical simulations, we have the charge transport solver and device, which can simulate electrical properties of semiconductors. We also have the heat transport solver that's available in the device as well. On the circuit simulation side, we have Interconnect. This is compatible with a number of EDA tools for simulations of photonic integrator circuits. The new automation API applies to all of the existing numerical products. It allows users to drive any numerical application from the numerical scripting environment, so one can completely automate the design process for devices that require many different types of physics and analysis. The API can also be driven from MATLAB, allowing the user to use the robust optimization routines or other MATLAB libraries in conjunction with numerical products. The first example is a traveling wave modulator, and we'll use a design based on the reference that's listed here. For these devices, designers need to consider the complex interplay of optical, high-speed electrical, and thermal effects. This includes an electrical simulation of the PN junction, optical mode analysis, the RF mode analysis for the transmission line, thermal analysis, as well as the overall circuit response. For the PN junction, one can take advantage of the new small signal AC capabilities in device to effectively extract the frequency domain response where linear assumption is valid. Here all you have to do is specify the frequency range and the voltages and you can calculate for example the capacitance as a function of voltage at any frequency. For this PN junction you can see that the capacitance doesn't change very much up to 1 GHz which is expected for reverse bias operation. A more interesting example for small signal AC analysis is the MOSFET, where you might want to determine the small signal parameters and extract the equivalent circuit representation. The values for the parameters can be calculated from the input and output impedance, which is shown here in the Smith chart, as well as the unity current gain curve. These are the typical results for a small signal AC simulation, and the results can be calculated automatically by device. Now coming back to the PN junction for the traveling wave modulator, here we'll also want to calculate the carrier density distribution as a function of voltage, as well as the IV response. The carrier density can then be converted into changes in the optical refractive index, and modal analysis can be used to find the optical modes and extract the loss in phase shift as a function of voltage. The same type of modal analysis can also be applied to the RF transmission line. So here I have the transmission line structure, which is loaded using a lumped RLC object. This is the mode that I get at 10 GHz, and I can use the same Eigenmode analysis tool in mode solutions to retrieve the microwave index as well as impedance. The new impedance analysis and SMITCHAR capabilities are very useful for these types of analysis, and these are the key parameters for a traveling wave modulator. In addition to electrical and optical analysis, you may also want to look at the phase shift that results from heating as you tune the mock sender arms. In this case, you can use a heat transport solver to calculate the temperature map resulting from placing a heater above the waveguide. And then we can use optical simulations to calculate the change in the propagation properties of the waveguide as a function of heating. Finally, in addition to the component level simulations, you may want to see how the modulator behaves at the circuit level taking into account all the results from the component level simulations. The Traveling Wave Modulator Compact Model and Interconnect can be used here to study the effect of index mismatch, impedance mismatch, and microwave loss.
you can, for example, look at how the eye diagram is affected by these properties. The nice thing about the new automation API is that you can automate the entire design process with a single script. For example, from the device scripting environment, you can run charge transport simulations, perform the small signal AC analysis, then you can launch a mode solution session for the optical mode analysis, followed by another mode solution session to carry out the RF transmission line analysis. And finally, you can take the results that you get from all, this, all the component level simulations and update the compact model and interconnect so that you can see how the circuit behavior of the modulator is affected by any changes you make to the component. If you would like more information on this entire flow, please feel free to sign up for the Traveling Wave Modulators webinar near the end of June. The next example I'm going to show is the MATLAB-driven optimization of a grading coupler. Here I want to get the best average transmission over the desired wavelength range using the optimization routines in MATLAB. The physical parameters are listed in the table here. And on the right side is a figure of merit as a function of the number of iterations. And you can see that with the MATLAB optimization toolbox, I was able to get the optimal value of about 40% transmission very quickly. And these types of optimizations are made very easy with the new automation API, which allows users to launch commands directly from MATLAB to Lumerical. The next key feature for this release is the integration with Cadence Virtuoso ADE. This is an improvement of the Electronic and Photonic Design Automation, or the EPDA framework. In collaboration with Cadence and Phoenix Software, Lumerical announced last year, the EPDA design framework integrated seamlessly with virtual, so including schematic capture, schematic driven layout, electrical simulation inspector, and a photonic PDK. Electrical and optical code design was enabled by adding an interface for Lumerical's interconnect for photonic circuit simulation and Lumerical's component level simulation tools for compact model library generation. Phoenix Software's advanced layout generation algorithm capabilities were also introduced to address photonic layout challenges. The code design interface included a sequential simulation of the photonic and electrical circuit through a waveform exchange driven by, from the analog design environment. The new interface now supports a true co-simulation interface with Spectre and Interconnect communicating through Lumerical's new API and Verilog DPI. The co-simulation capability is necessary for design with electro-optic feedback loops, for example in the case of an electro-optic oscillator. So first we start with schematic capture of both the electrical and optical circuit within Virtuoso. Here the electrical circuit consists of a simple TIA, a gain amplifier, and some voltage sources. The optical circuit is defined as a subcircuit with components like CW laser, modulator, time delay, and photodiode taken from a generic photonic PDK. To netlist and run the simulation inspector, the optical subcircuit is automatically embedded into a Verilog A wrapper. A netlist for the optical subcircuit is generated and sent to interconnect. For each time step in the spectre simulation, data is pushed and pulled through the Verilog DPI interconnect API interface. The seamless integration within Cadence analog design environment does not only allow users to run the simulation, but also to visualize the results. And this is a plot of the output signal for three different gains of the amplifier. The upload time delay determines the period of the oscillation. So now onto the remaining features for the 2016B release. So we also have a new coupled heat and charge transport mode, which solve the drift diffusion equation self-consistently with the heat transport equations. This allows you to simulate devices un under both isothermal and non-isothermal conditions, which is necessary for devices like photodetectors and solar cells. It also allows for the simulation of self-heating effects, which are important for electro-optic modulators and high current devices. Both of these modes are available under the edit window of the charge transport solver. I do want to point out that for the isothermal and non-isothermal mode, uh, you only need the charge transport license. But in order to access the coupled heat charge transport mode, you'll need both the charge transport license as well as the heat transport license. 
The example here I'm showing is the PIN diode. Here we can look at heat generation from current with no other sources of heating. And on the right side, you see the temperature map at V equals 1. And if we plot only the temperature across the line in the middle, we can see how much the temperature rises for different voltages. The next feature is only relevant for optical simulations, and these are 2D sheet objects. So 2D sheet objects allows users to efficiently simulate very thin sub-wavelength layers with arbitrary material dispersion. And one nice thing here is that um, no mesh override is required, and you can get away with a very coarse mesh. And this is really ideal for 2D materials like graphene or phosphorene, as well as very sub-wavelength layers, which are common in the RF and terahertz regime. So this applies for applications like metamaterials and transmission line. The new lumped RLC option for 2D rectangle geometries also allow users to simulate ideal lump resistors, inductors, and capacitors. And this is what I used for the traveling wave modulator earlier on. So in this metamaterial example with copper wire pairs, the wavelength is between 20 and 25 millimeters, whereas the copper thickness is only about 10 microns. So to do this brute force with 3D objects will require a very fine mesh to resolve the fine copper layers, which will increase the simulation time significantly. But because the copper thickness is very, very sublength wavelength, uh, it's much more efficient to use a 2D sheet object for the copper. In this case, you don't need a fine mesh at all, and you can still get results that agree very well with publication. Finally, I want to mention that uh, we have also made a number of upgrades to the mode solving engine to reduce calculation time and memory. This applies to the eigenmode solver and eigenmode expansion propagation solver in mode solutions, as well as the mode source and FDTD solutions. These changes are very crucial for simulating devices like waveguide brad gratings. And if you would like to learn more about these features, please feel free to register for the webinar coming up. So most of the examples in this video are already available online. The easiest way to find them, uh, as well as more information on the new release, is through the links provided here. The numerical knowledge base and knowledge exchange is also a great way to find additional information. But if you cannot find the examples that you're looking for, please feel free to write an email to support at numerical.com.